Hey guys, this is going to be the first video to go up on this channel, Self-Hosted Pro. Uh, I'm going to be filming a series that goes through home lab setup from uh, start to finish. The purpose of this versus some of the other channels that I've seen do tutorials is I'm going to go a little bit more in depth uh, with my explanation of things. I'm going to try and answer any questions that you guys in the community have. I'll try to do some uh, Q&A videos specifically for questions if I get some good ones. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over the installation of Proxmox. Uh, it's a Type 1 hypervisor, which basically means it's an operating system dedicated to hosting virtual servers and VMs and LXC containers. Uh, I feel like it offers some great advanced tools while still remaining pretty accessible. It's got a nice web interface for managing everything. It's going to let us access it from outside of our network, and it also offers two-factor authentication, which helps us expose that to the internet while still remaining as secure as we can. So what we're going to do to go ahead and get started is we're going to hop over to proxmox.com. I'll leave a link to this specific page in the comments below. But we're going to go ahead and download this Proxmox VE 6.1 ISO installer. Uh, and then while that's downloading, we're going to go ahead and open up another tab and we're going to search for Etcher, which is this great tool for flashing your ISO images like this onto USB drives. And you'll just go ahead and click download for whatever operating system you have. and It'll run through um, and install it and everything like that. I'm not going to actually wind up using this. I'm going to be installing everything in a virtual machine. If you need help, getting your ISO burned to a USB drive, just go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll go ahead and give you uh, whatever information I can to help you out with uh, booting from that USB drive. But I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to my virtual machine and take you through the install process once you've booted from that USB drive. All right guys, so when you first boot up, this is gonna be what you see. Uh, it's just a basic installer. If you've ever installed Linux before, you know how this kind of stuff goes. Uh, but you'll just basically select the first option and hit enter, and it will load a live kernel for you. All right, and so now that we've booted up, uh, you should not see this pop up here. I see it because I'm using a virtual machine right now, but if you see this, it means that you forgot to enable uh, Intel or AMD hypervisor features in your uh, BIOS. So I'll hit OK, but if you see that, make sure you boot in your BIOS and change those settings. Uh, just agree to this. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a ZFS uh, RAID 1 as well as the standard install here. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to be using this 30 gigabyte hard drive. You can change advanced options if you know what you're doing. Uh, if you do, you probably won't be watching this video. Uh, so just hit OK and then click on Next. You'll select your country and your time zone. I'm going to pick America, Los Angeles. And you'll set up a password. And you'll put in whatever email you want to. Um, I'm going to put in a fake one, but if you put in your real email, uh, it will send you uh, any errors that it gets with hard drives or things like that if you set up uh, the email ser services that are built into it. I'm just going to do mail at something.com. All right. No, oh, mail at something.com. So you're going to select your fully qualified domain name. If you own a domain, uh, you're going to put this as a subdomain. So you'll do like hypervisor.example.com. For me, I'm just going to do pve-01 because we may be making a cluster in a later video. .test.com. Uh, IP address, you can set it to whatever you want to. I'm going to leave it how it is. Just make sure you take note of it because we're going to be using that to connect to it later. Your net mask, it should automatically pick up and your gateway should automatically pick up. If it doesn't automatically pick them up, feel free to post in the comments and I'll help you figure out what these settings should be. Your DNS server, you can set it to your preferred one. I'm going to do 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. um, that's Cloudflare's DNS. 
uh, and then just click on next and then it'll give you a nice summary of everything and if everything looks correct you're just going to click on install and we'll be back when this is finished all right it looks like it just finished up so we'll go ahead and click on reboot and it will shut down and come back up stay in the uh, terminal or keep keep your display connected to your server while we go through this because we're going to be changing some things before we hop into the web interface all right so we've rebooted so we'll go ahead and log in the username is going to be root and the password is going to be whatever you set when you went through the installer what we're going to be doing before we hop over into the web interface is we're going to be adding the no subscription repository which lets us use updates from the community repo instead of the enterprise repo because we won't be able to get any updates unless we have a subscription uh, if we don't change this beforehand so we're going to do nano slash etc slash apt which is our package manager slash sources dot list dot d slash pve dash enterprise dot list and so we're going to change this we're going to comment this out we're going to type in deb http colon double backslash uh, download dot proxmox.com slash debian slash pve space buster space uh, pve dash no dash subscription and i'll leave that in a paste bin in the comments below so that way you guys can uh, read that off if you can't read it from the screen here and then you type Control o to save the file and then Control x to exit um, and then you'll type Control o to save the file hit enter to write it and then Control x to exit and then we'll go ahead and type in sudo apt update sorry just apt update because sudo isn't installed by default on debian and then we're gonna do apt upgrade dash y and then we can also do and and apt install sudo so what this command is going to do is the first half of it before that uh, double ampersand is going to be upgrading our system with the latest packages and everything after that is going to be to install uh, this program called sudo which allows non-root users to use commands as if they were the root user so just hit enter it'll take a few minutes to go through here uh, and grab the latest stuff uh, when it's finished up i'll be back and we'll hop over into the web interface so make sure you have that ip address from earlier if you can't remember it you can type in exit and then enter to log out uh, and it'll show you the url to go to in order to access the web interface for proxmox all right guys so we're back we're finished with our update and everything so what we'll go ahead and do is we'll open up a browser and we'll go to our IP address here, make sure you you put HTTPS before the IP address and you go to port 8006. That's what this colon 8006 is here for. You'll get this warning that says your connection is not private. It's just because it's a self-generated certificate on the server. Uh, so that's not an issue for us. So we'll just go ahead and click advanced and then continue. I'm going to log in using the same username and password uh that we had put in previously and then you'll get this view here where you're going to have your data center you're going to have the node that you just set up this host name is going to be anything before the period in your fully qualified domain name that we put in in the installer so what we're going to do here is we're going to hop on down uh, you'll typically see this tab when you first come in and we'll hop on down to ZFS. I'm going to show you guys how to set up a ZFS RAID array in Proxmox. That way you can have a nice software RAID that you can give to some of your virtual machines for storage. Uh, so we're just going to call this data. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving this to an open media vault 
uh, virtual machine in our next video. But so for now, we're going to be doing the raid level as raid Z because I got five drives here. These are all just 100 gigabyte virtual drives. It doesn't matter uh, in this case, but in your guys' case, make sure your drives are all the same size. Um, and then you just hit create. And it'll go through and it'll create the raid array. You'll get task OK. And then you'll see it pop up over here. And you can see content and everything like that. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of the web interface. Uh, essentially, in this first area, you're going to see a summary for your data center. So your data center is going to be uh, any nodes in your cluster. Or if you only have one node, it's just going to be information about that one node. Uh, the next tab you're going to have is going to be your cluster um, tab. This is where you can join your clusters or join your servers into a cluster, or you can get information from your server to join another server to that cluster. We'll be going a little bit further into that in another video. You have some options here. These are the default options uh, that are set, and you can change them uh, to whatever you see fit. You have your standard storage here. And you can add different network storage, so that way it's shared across all of your servers. Uh, you got backups here. So you can add backups for specific nodes or all of your nodes. You can send emails when the job's done. You can pick a few different uh, options for format, for your compression. You can just have it email you if it failed. Uh, some nice features like that. We have replication here. This is going to be for high availability. So basically, it'll keep a copy of your virtual machine on both servers in your cluster. So that way, if one of your nodes goes down, uh, that virtual machine will still be available. Uh, one thing we're going to do here is we're going to hop into this permissions section. We're going to click on users. We're going to click on this root user, and we're going to click on TFA. So we're going to be setting up two-factor authentication. You're just going to download the Google Authenticator app and scan this barcode. You'll type in the verification code that it gives you, click apply, and then when you log in, it's going to ask you for that two-factor authentication every time. The reason we're doing this is because we're going to be exposing this to the internet, and we don't want someone to be able to log in even if you have a weak password or something like that. Um, nothing else here is really going to be used for our home lab environment. You can set up some firewall rules if you want to, but I personally haven't used this uh, either at home or in the enterprise. Uh, and then in this tab here, you see your node, and this is where you're going to get all of your information on your node. Uh, specifically, you can set notes, you can get a shell into your node, so that way you can copy and paste things and fill things out with ha without having to SSH into your server and without having to connect a monitor to your server. And you get a list of all of your services here. You have network options you can create. By default, it has two. It has your default network device, uh, whatever you have plugged into the Ethernet port. Uh, and then it's going to create this Linux bridge here. And this is what your virtual machines are going to use to connect to your network. Uh, you can have certificates here. So if you do want Proxmox to be available without a reverse proxy, like we're going to be setting it up, you can add those certificates in here so you have a secure connection even if you're not on your home network you can set your dns settings here you can change your hosts file here you can set your time if you set it incorrectly and you have a log of everything that your server is doing in this syslog section you have a list of all of your updates that are available in here we won't have anything because we're fully up to date you can set a firewall at the server level and then you have your disks set up like we had previously. Um, and then you have this option for Ceph, which we're not going to be going over. It's basically a nice, really high performance storage pool. Uh, it's a lot more than that, but that's not something that we're going to really dive into uh, in this series. If we really, if you guys really want to see something uh, as far as like a Ceph setup goes, let me know and I'll, I'll set it up. Uh, and I'll do a video on it, but for now, we're just going to skip over it. And you have your task history here, which is just basically a list of all of the things that have happened on your server, uh, which is nice. So if you get compromised or something like that, you can go here and see uh, what all has been done. Or uh, it can be an indicator of compromise if you see stuff here that you didn't do. Uh, 
Um, it tends to get pretty cluttered when you're going in with your console and viewing virtual machines through the web interface and things like that. So it's not super great, but it's good to have it here. Um, and it's basically a rundown of the uh, web interface. If you guys have any questions about it, feel free to post them in the comments below. In the next video, we're going to be hopping into Open Media Vault and getting that set up uh, for network storage and to host some different containers for some of our services that we're going to be setting up.